The Alpha Sessions with Ron Laver. Good afternoon, my name's Ron Laver. Welcome to Alpha Sessions and today from a home in Caerphilly, it's uh, Caitlin May. Hello, Caitlin. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. You're, you're more than welcome. It's lovely to speak to you. And uh, how, how are things in Caerphilly today? We're, we're doing well, me and my family, we're doing really well. But obviously things are a little bit up in the air at the moment with coronavirus and this lockdown and just all the rules and regulations. But we're, we're just trying our hardest to keep everybody safe and so we're staying indoors and we're just yeah well th thankfully i've got the studio in the garden so it's the studio and house and that's about that's about it <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's just about keeping safe at the moment so uh, that's that's what we're all trying to do and get through this now you you were on uh late last year on the alpha sessions speaking to yeah. emma and uh, we we learned then that uh, you've been singing since you were really quite young, and and a lot of that was done in Florida, where you got your your liking for country music, regular yeah. trips over there. Um, and but although you've been singing all those years, you've only just recently started playing the guitar, haven't you? Yeah, I think. When I was little, my friend started playing piano and I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to try that out. And it didn't suit me. And I don't know whether it was I was just so young or whether the piano just in general wouldn't suit me. But I think it just put me off trying to learn any other instruments for so long. I was like, I'm just not good at instruments in general. And then the more and more I was just feeling so immersed in the country music community. I was like, there's just no way that I can go forward without learning to play guitar. I've got to put my all into it and just see where I can go. And from the first day that I picked up the guitar and just began giving it a go, I just realized it's not always all instruments just because you've had one bad experience. And it wasn't even bad. I was just not progressing as quickly as I would have liked because I just want everything to fall into place but you can't learn to play piano in a day <laughs> but um I think maybe if I'd stuck to it back then maybe I would have learned more instruments like at a younger age but I am glad that I just took the leap of faith and decided to go for guitar because I've absolutely loved learning and getting to know the strings mm. so the, you you obviously were taught piano at one stage how you know how far did you get with that was that like at school or I, yeah, I really didn't get very far. It was after school and I think I, I've always loved music and I've always loved performing on stage and acting and dancing. So the whole the whole thing. But my friend, her parents were really strict. And so I only got to see her in school. And when she wanted to learn guitar, uh, no, when she wanted to learn piano, I don't think that would have been my first instrument of choice to learn but I wanted to spend additional time with her as well so I would go and then she'd been going for a lot longer than me and then she moved up to the higher level and I was like why am I not going to the higher level and then I was like I give up I give up <laughs> did, it, did, did what you learned there did that bring anything to your guitar playing? Did you did you have any sort of musical background about chords, <laughs> sequences, or or was it all lost? It was all lost. Really, it was all lost. So you started from scratch again on the guitar this uh, this last yeah. year. Yeah. And, and, and I've seen you playing uh, live sessions, and uh, you, you you know you're pretty proficient on it. So uh, you, you know you, you've obviously taken to it. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I just, um, I, I've just really been enjoying it. And I think that it's given me something else to focus on during the first lockdown when we were, you know, it was so new to us as well, the pandemic. And the first lockdown was really long. And I just spent that time trying to learn the guitar and just trying to really focus on the music because it, it gets people through so much. And it's definitely gotten me through this time. Last time you were on with us, you mentioned Teen Taxi, which yeah. is a, a BBC a kids series, I guess, is it? Yeah, it's like a for, for like young teenagers and 
yeah it's, it's yeah. quite a family friendly thing yeah i i i managed to catch up with uh, an episode that you were in oh, and wow. uh again i mean because i i when you mentioned it when you were on before i just thought it was like you know some acting when you were doing but it's not acting is it it's a uh, it it, and and it's interesting because the taxi basically is mum and dad. Yeah. So it's yeah, which we all know about <laughs> that that sort of taxi. Yeah. And uh, and it's teenagers like yourself, um, you know, just talking to their parents and, yeah. and you know, getting advice back from them. Was that? Uh, I mean, watching it, I, I doubt whether it was, but I have to ask you, was it scripted or was it completely, you know, off the cuff? It was completely off the cuff. It wasn't scripted. Um, and the funny thing was that we, they, the um, crew would be travelling in a separate car behind you. So we'd all be mic'd up and we'd be talking, but they would be in a separate car. And we also had, obviously, the cameras fitted in our car. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, they they would say maybe we'll be out for two or three hours. And a lot of the teenagers they had would stick to the time frame and they'd be like, OK, are you ready for a break? Do you want to we'll stop off for food now? No, let's keep going. I, I just wanted to because when I start talking, I could just talk for days. So I was like, no, no, we can keep going. So our days were like eight hours long. <laughs> and we'd be, <laughs> we'd be coming back home. It would be pitch black. And all the other teens were just like their two, three hour slots. And I was like, no, we can, come on, we can, we can do more. We, we, we got it. I hope, I hope the crew had sandwiches with them. <laughs> they, they were actually very good. They had so many different choices. Like we, we could stop off somewhere, even if we didn't stop off at um, like a fast food place. They would be like, we have this, this, this in the, in the van. It, it was, they were great. It was yeah. just, it was yeah. definitely a really good experience. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I have to say, I love your mum and dad in it too. <laughs> and you and your mum singing together. Has your mum considered a career in singing? <laughs> she, I mean, my mum actually, she used to love being in um, the choir and she did do, do things in school with music and performing. And my mum's mum loves the arts. She loves acting and she loves being on stage. So. I can definitely see where I've drawn on some, you know, some of my role models. <laughs> Talking about being on stage, you you once appeared uh, or, or shared a stage with uh, Carrie Underwood at the yeah. uh, Motorpoint Arena. Yeah, it, it was actually her first time in Wales as well. So that was just the best experience. And I got to meet her backstage before we actually went on and she was so down to earth and so mm. kind and just you could just have a completely normal conversation with her she was just really nice and what about so what were you were you like a support support act so for her tour she was holding auditions for certain venues that um would allow for like a duet for somebody to be able to come on halfway through and Luckily, one of the ven the venue that I went to was one of those venues. So I auditioned and they said you would hear a week before and a week came and a week went. And I was like, I didn't I can't believe it. I was like, in Wales, if if I'm auditioning for things and I can't get something that is specifically country, what what can I get? Like that is just <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, and then it actually turned out three days before my mum was on the phone to her mum who lives in Spain so she she like really cherishes those phone calls so somebody else was calling in between that call and she was like oh I'll, I'll get it later and she finished up her call with her mum she listened to her voicemails and it was like hey this is Shelly from Carrie Underwood's team and my mum was like hold the phone hold the phone she's she's freaking out me and my brother come into the room she's crying she's in floods of tears i was like oh my god i, I honestly i thought like who's who's died something is badly wrong and she was like you got it and i was like i was like got got what because i'd already put it to the back of my head thinking that the week had come and gone so mm. 
I thought I definitely didn't have it at this point. And she was like, you sing it with Carrie Underwood. I was like, oh my God, That's, oh my God. And she, yeah, it was just surreal. And then just the fact that it was a couple nights later and I was on stage and I just wish that could be every night. So you actually duetted with Carrie Underwood. Yeah, so I just had that incredible opportunity to duet the champion with her and right. it was absolutely incredible and when I spoke to her backstage before we went on uh, she said to me oh that they, they told me as well not to say that I was singing with her just to leave it as a surprise so I was like oh okay in the moment I was just like yeah I, I won't say anything so I went in and she was like I'm singing with you later and there was like a camera crew and they were filming it and I was like oh my god you know <laughs> And she was like, I've watched your YouTube videos and I know that you're a performer. You really utilize the space on the stage. So she was like, just be yourself and you can move around. Don't worry about standing still. And so I was like, oh, thank, thank the Lord. Because I said to my mum before, I don't think I'll be able to stop myself from moving. I'll be on stage. I will be moving. <laughs> so I hope she doesn't say stand on the X and don't move because I'll, I'll be gone. Yeah. <laughs> But luckily she was just so down to earth and she was like, you, you just be you on the stage and I'll follow you. So she was just, just really, really nice. And she just made you feel really comfortable. Did and you get was... a re did you get a rehearsal before? No, you just did my... it cold. I just did it. Yeah. I just did it for the first time that night. And my mum was like, when, when she did speak to Shirley, she was like, do they get a rehearsal? And she was like, no, no, no. And my mum was like, my mum was freaking out because <laughs> she, she gets so nervous for me. Yeah. And um, she, she was like, oh, you know, are you okay and all this? And I was just like, I'm ready, I'm ready for this. I'm ready, I'm rocking it. <laughs> well done. What a, what a fantastic experience for you. Absolutely fabulous. You're playing some songs for us today. And the first one uh, is Blue Bluebird by yeah. Miranda Lambert um why what what do you like about that song so this song was actually the first one of the first ones i learned and really became comfortable with with on the guitar and even though back when i learned it i the bluebird has always been this dream venue that i would love to perform at um even though at that point i'd never performed there i think like I said earlier things do happen for a reason and I think it was about maybe two weeks ago now I'm losing track of time in lockdown um but I actually had the opportunity to perform my single that's coming out on the 12th of February and debut it at the Bluebird virtually so that was absolutely incredible and so I always smile when I sing this song yeah I'm a temple.
Alpha Sessions with Ron Laver. You were hoping to get an EP out early this year. Yeah. Where, where are you with, I know there isn't anything uh, on the horizon just yet, but is that still something you're you're looking to do? Yeah, so after my single is going to be released on the 12th of February, my next project is the EP and that'll be coming April. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, the plan is to release three of the songs as singles and then to release the whole EP with, the bo with a bonus track, which will be the fourth song. And I am really excited for it because my, in my initial idea for the EP, which I actually wanted to release last summer, but again, we were in lockdown, so I couldn't, um, has changed. And it's definitely changed for the better, in my opinion, because it's because it's my debut EP. I wanted it to have more of a storyline. So I've jigged everything around and now it's going to tell my story, all four songs. So I'm just really excited for that to come out and people to see a different side to my music. Mm. So presumably more personal. Much, much more personal. And, you know, some of the songs are going to be emotional i think for me um and hopefully then people will be able to to read that when they're listening to the songs um and really more than anything it's all about the same experience but it's just my different perspectives because something can happen and you can take it one way and something could happen to someone else that's exactly the same and they could take it completely differently so more than anything it's four songs about the same thing but from different perspectives right that's really interesting i'm that's, so excited yeah yeah <laughs> and and i think that's quite a mature thing for someone of your age to be able to to look at different perspectives do you find that ability helps you uh you know in your in your personal life and your dealings with other people I 100% think it does because, I mean, the, the, the four songs and the EP are about something that has, you know, been with me and I've been experiencing from like as, as long as I can remember, extremely young. And so I think growing up and not, not just having the outlook that what I say and what I feel is the only thing that is right and the only thing that goes has helped me in so many different aspects because I mean one actually I think it helps me write songs because I don't always you know take a certain view when I write songs they can come from so many different places but also um when I was in school and I, I was bullied badly in comprehensive school I think I was always really accepting like if people said things I would I would very rarely argue back saying these horrible things back to them because I, I often think everybody has their opinion and if if they don't like you or they have something bad to say about you that that's still valid to them so I, I would never fight back and say well actually this is what I think about you because I, I just think you know you, you can have your own opinions but you don't always have to force them on other people and you mm. don't you don't have to go about it in such a way that is hurtful. Mm. I mean, you, you mentioned it there and you've, you've never made any secret of, of the fact that you've been bullied at school and uh, to, and quite roughly as well, to the point where you've had broken ribs. You know, it wasn't just words, was it? Yeah. You know, it was, it was actions as well. And I've heard you say before that you have no hate towards those people. I think as well, my mum always says, like, how, how do you not dislike the people who did these things to you in school because it was really really brutal for so many years I um I've said to people uh, my attendance I, I loved school and I loved the social aspect and I loved learning but my attendance was starting to decrease because on a Friday I would have to take the day off just to make sure I had a long weekend to recover from you know the awful things that were happening in school but I always turned to music to um, just make myself feel better and make myself feel like not everything is bad. You can look at things, it, it, you, one day you can feel like the whole world is coming to an end and the next day you can look at it from such an angle that 
you just feel like you can't control everything that happens to you you can just control the way you move forward so I think having that outlook in school really helped me Mm. do you think because you have been on the receiving end of of you know hate bullying fighting that sort of thing um in a strange way then that's rather than sort of riled you up and said right I'm going to get you back that you know you've got this ability to say well okay that you know I I I accept I accept that you hate me which is quite a hard thing for anyone to do no one like no one wants to be hated we all want to be loved and and we want to you know so I I just think I just think you've got a very well balanced sort of uh head on you and and again you know remarkable for your age I I think uh, I think it's fantastic I think as well if I had focused so much on all the negativity and decided that I was going to mirror that negativity and you know behave like that towards those people I think it wouldn't have just given me the opportunity to just experience everything I have with my music I, I think I feel things like to the extreme so if I'm really really happy I can write a song that is so that is so incredibly like joyful but at the same time I think writing helps me on the other end of the spectrum when I'm feeling so down and the easiest way to deal with that is to write a song because I think hiding those feelings from people is what causes you know is, is what causes this um lump under the rug to then reappear years later and it's much worse that's why I I just always dealt with things as they happened and I'm really glad that my family we've always been so close so I could come home and tell my mum and dad everything and I don't have to hide anything from them so I I mean I'm I'm really an open person as well so I I will tell anybody but my family they've just been my rock Mm, which is important of course I I sort of get from that then that I'm I'm just sort of listening to what you're saying and and it's like you know people often say you've got to be down you know you've got to be really down before you you can be really up again because yeah. you know it's like the two ends of the spectrum and because you obviously have been down you you've now you know you're always up you're always smiling you know I've seen you in interviews before and uh, you know you're very bubbly and and maybe you know that's that's the result of, of you know how you grew up with, yeah. with those people around you but and it's really yeah. positive and really good to see yeah and I was just thinking back about what you said about um like revenge some people that that is the route that some people take and um I, I've never ever wanted to do that but revenge actually makes a really good song. So drawing on the things that did happen in school, I've written songs about things I would never do and I've never thought about doing. And then I think I can't release that because it makes me sound like it, it makes me sound like that is something I would do. But actually, it's just that it makes it does make a really good song. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take it a little bit further and your career goes well. And one day you're in Nashville and you're playing on one of those big stages like the Opry or, or the uh, Bluebird. Do you think then, will you get some sort of satisfaction from that in the way of, I, well, look at me now? Yeah, uh, I, I definitely think that I've, al- I've always had the passion for music, but I said to my parents, if I could choose for my life to have been different, I wouldn't because you don't know sometimes that the experiences, however negative they are, you don't know what impact they actually had in the path you actually take in life. So even though I always loved music, I think maybe I had even more drive because of what happened to me in school. So I I feel in a way that maybe I should thank them because it really just gave me this, this ambition and I just wanted to look forward and I didn't wanna look back and think, well, I wish I was more popular or I wish this hadn't have happened because I don't know where I would be today. So I I just think you should always take things in your stride and be grateful because things do happen for a reason. Well, you know, all good to you for that. Let's hear some more music now. And uh, what's this next one you're going to play for us? So this next one is called Ladylike and 
I tell everybody before I sing it that it just reminds me of myself so much because growing up I was always the tomboy I was always in jeans or leggings and coming in from outside my brother would look spotless and I would be the one it head to toe in mud and dirt and grazes on my knees and my elbows and I, I was just I was that child <laughs> my mum was like can you just just once come home looking clean and I was like, I just don't think it's possible. Alpha Sessions with Ron Laver. The country music scene is quite tight and, and together in the UK. What's it like in Wales? Yeah, I mean, close to me, I don't know a lot of country artists or who, people who, um, like organisations that support country music. So I'm sure there are more out there than I actually am aware of. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's as big as it is across the UK and in some parts of the UK as, as it is in Wales. I, yeah, I would definitely say it's got a bit of growing to do. Uh, and also it, it sometimes just takes finding that community because it could be somewhere tucked away and you don't, mm. you just aren't, you just don't know about it. Mm. So I think it, it could do with some growing, but the people that I have found, even, even though some of them are virtual and they're not really close, it just has been great to really build the, the support system that I have. And, you know, a lot of them now, I feel, I feel like I've met them and I haven't. Mm. And um, I'll, I'll pre-order their single and they'll pre-order my single. And it's just really nice to be able to find that because before I found a specifically country music family, I just had more of a musical I knew a lot of people in the music, but mm. it was pop and musical theatre. And I 
don't think it's quite as intimate and supportive. A lot of the time it can be a little bit, people are at each other's throats. And again, that just reminds me of school. So I'm just like, I, mm. I'd rather be on the journey alone than be on a journey where everybody is toxic and you really don't like each other. And I think that that is such a bad, bad thing to be surrounded by so the country music community i haven't found one person like that they're no. all they're all amazing no, i abs absolutely agree with you on that it's it it's a really tight knit and, and close close group well maybe you'll be the catalyst uh, for more artists in wales uh, you yes. know, uh showing up and and getting in touch that would that would be good if we look at your uh, musical background in terms of uh, releases 2019 you released a single called dream yeah. which was a, a really good feel and, and a real you know literally a yeehaw record wasn't it <laughs> literally so in uh, 2020 you did a couple of christmas singles candle for christmas which was uh, sl slower and, and more laid back and then within a few days almost probably a few weeks you you released another christmas single uh, christmas yes. kiss which really had a driving tempo and yeah. uh, and uh, probably good for line dancing i don't yeah. do it myself but it <laughs> me neither actually but i should <laughs> <laughs> um and and on that you'll you'll I've, i noticed on spotify that with each release your uh, your listening figures are sort of growing for each signal a yeah. single so you're you're building a you're building a following there and also candle for christmas got to number five and uh, christmas kiss got to number two on the itunes country music chart which is yeah. fabulous for you know almost your first few records so uh yeah so we, we're hoping for big things now with your with your new single uh that you mentioned before um just tell us again it's coming out on the 12th of february and it's called Th those three words yeah and, and I... uh, is it i mean that's very close to uh, valentine's day isn't it is it yeah. is it a love song yeah i think it is a love song but it's not your typical everyday love song because it's very real and very truthful and i say this i haven't had a boyfriend i've been so music driven that i've just been you know music music writing songs and so i i haven't had a relationship but over the years, just growing up from such a little girl and then, you know, all the different stages and being in school and being in college and all, all the different stages of life, you see so many different people and no relationship is perfect. And that is just something to take away that sometimes people have such high expectations of each other and that's why it doesn't work out. And, you know, no, nobody's perfect. So no relationship. Is going to be perfect but it's just those imperfections that make a relationship and a romance special and unique so it's just i think a story to to tell people that it's okay not to be perfect the the you know the special thing is finding somebody who finds your flaws perfect to them that's again that's very perceptive of you especially you know as you as you say you've not had a a long-term boyfriend at all <laughs> and uh and yeah that's uh, uh i'm i'm worried in case i meet you one day and 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 you'll just be sitting there going mm -hmm, and taking notes you know yeah i can i can, I can see what i can see all his flaws yeah i can see what he's doing <laughs> because it, it seems to me you know that that you've never sort of had that experience but you, you know you you understand it because you've you've you know it's gone in it's you've observed it somewhere you know from friends and family and yeah. things like that and i think as well that's i mean i've always grown up watching my parents have such like a great relationship they you know i i 
they don't argue. I don't I don't really see them argue. If I do remember one one argument when I was really young. Um, I, I don't know what it was about, but it's just that I've drawn on so many different relationships that I have seen. So with my parents, it's always been like the good side and just how much I can tell they love each other. And then I think being in school where people are still young and they are still maturing. So I understand that those relationships are not always going to be, you know, as good as they might be in 10 years time. But then that's where you get the side where you can see the arguments and you do see how frustrated they are with each other. And I think the song that I wrote is just really brings everything together, brings the both sides of of these love stories together. So hopefully it can tell that story. And for me as well, it's young people. I hope really young people get to hear the song because it's quite a fun song to listen to. So I hope they listen and realize that these Disney fairy tales that are always told are not always true. And, you know, it's gonna be extremely hard to find that. So you need yeah. to find your own, your own special. Yeah. I think I think people are going to be really surprised I think based on my other releases just how how different the EP is going to be it's just that I I'm just telling a story that I think I've probably never had the courage to tell publicly before so I'm just really excited to see what people think of that side of me mm. Well, we'll we'll look forward to that. It sounds really intriguing. I I, I can't wait to hear about it, and uh, and uh, we'll we'll certainly be hoping to play uh, some of those tracks on our yeah. station here at Radio Broccoli um, via Alpha Sessions, and also we have a country music show that goes out to the patients. So uh, we'll yeah. we'll hope to be able to play those. But in the meantime, we're gonna hear your new single those three words uh so thank you very much caitlin it's been a delight talking to you and uh, i wish you well for the future and I, i'll be watching on the 12th of february i'll be looking at the itunes chart to see how you're getting on i just won't sleep i'll just stay up <laughs> and just just watch it <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for having me on. I really, really enjoyed it. That you're perfectly welcome, and uh, nice to talk to you. Bye for now. You too. Yeah. See you soon. <laughs>